Hey everyone, and welcome to 15 Minutes to Merge. I'm April Edwards, I'm your host for today, and I'm a senior developer advocate at GitHub, but I'm also a Hashi ambassador, and I'm super passionate about Terraform. So I'm very, very honored to have a very special guest with us today, Ned Bellavance. Ned, welcome. Hey, April, how you doing? Doing great. So welcome to the show. Can you take a moment and tell everyone who you are and what it is you do? Sure. Well, my name is Ned Bellavance. You can find me at nedinthecloud.com. And in terms of what I do, uh, I'm a technical educator. That's my focus. And a lot of what I teach is around Terraform and other HashiCorp products. Awesome. And you're a fellow Hashi ambassador, which is why I'm super stoked to have you here. So we're going to talk about a little bit of Terraform and more specifically around creating modules. Now, people are going to ask, what are modules and why are they important? Can you go ahead and give us a bit of insight into that? Yeah, that's a great start. So once you've been using Terraform for a little while, you're going to pick up on some common patterns that you might deploy or some things that are commonly grouped together. And you're thinking to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if I could abstract that into its own discrete unit? And hey, that's exactly what modules are for. Modules are intended to take a common set of resources and treat them as a logical unit by putting them in their own Terraform configuration which you can then invoke using the module block within your Terraform configuration. Now, you don't have to write them yourself. Uh, a lot of modules already are published on the Terraform public registry, so you can go and browse through those modules, and chances are you'll find one, especially for common use cases, that's already been created. One of my favorites and one that I look to for inspiration when it comes to module and file structure is the VPC module that's been published on the Terraform registry. Over in my browser, I have the Terraform public registry with the modules here, and one that I look to a lot for inspiration and you know a good structure for modules is the VPC module that's published for AWS. If we click on that module, it takes us to how to use that module, but more importantly, all of the modules that are published on the public registry, you can go directly to their GitHub repository and look at the source code. So if you're wondering what a good module looks like, here's a great example of how it's structured. So if you want, we can walk through some of the best practices and files that are typically included in a module, if that sounds good. Yeah, let's do it. This is great. Because when I started writing modules, it was really hard to know what was best practice. Um, I'm still very early doors with modules. So yeah, I'd love to know what the best practices are and how we can write better modules. Right. So it's important to understand that all information that you want to submit to a module is submitted through input variables. So in well-written modules, there will always be a variables.tf file, and there's one in this directory right here that defines all the input variables for this module. Likewise, the only way to get information out of a module is through well-defined outputs, and so you will always find an outputs.tf file in there as well. The rest of the resources and configuration for the Terraform module will be included in other .tf files. So typically you'll see a main .tf file as well as any other ancillary .tf files they decided to include. You also want to specify what version of the provider you're using in your, in your module you want to support, and that's typically done in the versions.tf. So if you look in that file, you'll see it has the required version of the Terraform CLI that this module supports, as well as the version of the AWS provider that's supported, which implies whoever developed this module actually did some testing and said, yep, anything like 5.2 or newer for the AWS provider is A-OK. -okay. We know that works. So those are the Terraform files that you want to include. But beyond that, you do want to include a readme that explains how to use this module in general, as well as an examples directory. And the examples directory has a bunch of different examples of common use cases for your module. So you can include subdirectories in here that describe, here's a common use case for it. Maybe I'm deploying a complete VPC in AWS, and I'm going to walk through in the readme how to use this example, as well as include the .tf files that leverage the module that's two folders up. So those are some of the things that you absolutely want to include when you're writing your module. The next big question is, what actually goes into a module and how do I decide what resources to include, what inputs and outputs to define? And that goes into the design process, if we want to touch on that for a moment. Let's look at how we design a module. I think that's going to be super critical for everyone as well. Right. So 
The most important part of designing a module is figuring out exactly what you want to include and what should not be part of the module. You don't want to overdo it. Everything in the module should have a similar life cycle associated with it, and you can make some components optional. When you're deciding on your input variables, you want to make them well-defined. You want to include a type for them so that people who are using the module submit the right data type and also some validation blocks if you feel comfortable adding those. And then for outputs, think about how people are commonly going to use this module. That's where the examples come in. And what information are they going to need from the module when they invoke it to make use of it somewhere else in their configuration? So those are the common questions you can ask yourself. Or if you're writing that module for a team, sit down with the team and have a little design session and ask these specific questions to them. Absolutely. You can always add outputs as well, add variables and add these things onto the modules when you're writing them, but have a good baseline to start from. I think that's really good. Sit with your team, talk it through and figure out what those dependencies are. And once you're ready to actually build and publish your module, you can publish it on the Terraform public registry. It's not the only place you can publish it. You can also publish it if you have Terraform Cloud. You can publish it on the private registry that's included with Terraform Cloud. GitLab has a private registry version. And some of the other automation tools also have private registries. So you have a lot of options for, for where you publish it. But the most common one, especially if you want to share it with the wider world, is publishing it on the Terraform registry. And the process for that is really simple. You have to connect your GitHub account to your Terraform registry account, which I've already done. And then you go to publish and select module. And I have an example repository that I tend to use, which is called Terraform Azure RM Networking. What it does is it looks for all the repositories in your GitHub account that start with Terraform Dash, and that's the required naming convention for publishing modules. It should be Terraform dash the provider you're using dash the purpose of your module. So this is, in case you didn't already guess, a module for configuring Azure networking. Once I click on publish module, it pulls in all the code from that GitHub repository and creates this registry page for me. And it looks for release tags on the repository. So this is the repository that it's based off of. And if we look at the releases, I have several releases in here that are all using semantic version tagging. So when you want to publish a version of your module, you'll create a new release. You'll use the semantic versioning of 1.2.3 or x.x.x, and then create that release. And the Terraform registry picks up on that release and publishes it on the public registry. Once you've done that, it also pulls in your readme, so you can see the whole readme in there. It pulls in all the inputs and outputs you've defined, as well as dependency and resources. So it actually does a lot of the work for you in terms of documentation. And then when you want to use your module, it actually includes a handy dandy module block under the provision instructions that you can copy and paste into your existing code, and then add all the required input variables for using that module. Ned, this is awesome. So being able to write modules, create modules, and share them really embraces the heart of open source, but also be able to search other people's modules, see how they've done it. What I really like here is you've created this module. We have provisioning instructions right there, which makes it really easy and really super simple, um, which I love. We can create our out inputs. We can see our outputs. The other thing is you had multiple versions tagged in your GitHub repository. So people can go look at how you versioned over time, the different releases, because Terraform, honestly, does change versions itself. So over time, your modules grown and changed with the Terraform changes. So I think this is great. It basically gives you all the, um, the documentation you need for anyone to pick this up, understand what's happening, tells you what resources and dependencies there are. This is fantastic. I love this because not only does it help you write better Terraform, but it also embraces that open source mentality. Mm -hmm. So awesome, Ned. Thank you for sharing this with us today. And for everyone watching, we will include any links of how to get started. So obviously how to get started with Terraform uh, registry. So you can upload your own uh, modules, but then also review and see all the types of modules available to your, to, at your availability as well. And um, Ned, thank you once again. It's been great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, April. Anytime. All right, Ned. Take care and see you everyone next time on 15 Minutes to Merge.